it's me, Kevin Von Esper. Welcome to Guar Pod. How is everybody doing? Has everybody gotten their cuttlefishes? I'm still waiting for mine, but I know it's coming. Drop a comment if you're here. We got a Dim Times member today. Another one. I guess Steve Douglas was a, di a Dim Times member as well. So it should be an interesting conversation. I'm looking forward to it. It's been a long time coming. And you know what? I'm going to play the intro this time at the beginning of the show. How about that? Ready? Guarpod comes from on Guarpod. 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 Hello. Hey. How are you? I'm all right. Thanks this for having me. Oh, thank you for coming on the show. Uh, sorry for rescheduling so many times. I know we've been trying to get this together for a minute, yeah. but we finally got it together. Mm -hmm. And uh, and also, thank you because you've been a big help, just like as a resource of uh, for this show and and uh, getting in contact with other people and things like that. Yeah, you're welcome. I think like it's interesting to hear different points of view from every aspect of a band that's you know, exactly band. what i want you know i do this for myself above everything else because i'm selfish and i want to hear you know all the everything i want to hear every side of this like the roadies yes right tell me about the roadies why well, are they I mean, so I important know, to guar i know a roadie <laughs> for oh you mean in general or yeah no i mean yeah. from that world this world you're working in right now Guar, yeah, a manager and stuff, yeah. Yeah, would you like to talk about how important they are to the operation? Um, well, they're the fly on the wall, I presume, and I just think that you know maybe they'll they can see the whole you know workings and the you know the the machinery in action, but right. you know so. Yeah, I'd love to talk to some of them too. Um, I did talk to not a, he's not a manager, but my friend Jason helps them do. Um, I it's so hard to describe what he does for them, but he's basically there in lieu of a label guy because <laughs> they are their own label now. Back to DIY, yeah. Guar is not tied to any record label as far as I know. Right now. Yeah, for like the last couple of years. Good for them. Yeah, Pit Records. They started their own. Mm -hmm. so they they now own everything going forward i presume right cool yeah i mean good D dyi diy way. yeah totally yeah Me too. do I yourself know. it what do yourself it <laughs> do everything yeah de <laughs> right de diy do a speech yeah See? it's like it's sort of like the record labels on the Right, like, or whatever, like. It's kind of irrelevant now. I mean, I get it back in the 80s and 90s, it was very important to, to have that. But now with uh, the internet and the way things are, and if you're already at a certain profile, I mean, Guar has been playing the same venues ever since I've see, started seeing them like 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. They're kind of like, they know where, you know, they always sell out Irving Plaza in New York City. Uh-huh. And they've been doing that for like 20 years. What do you need a record label for that? Right. You know, they're kind of like, we know where our position is in this, you know, right world. I so, wasn't that part of that era of Guar, but yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. This is Colette Miller. She, oh boy. That's when was this 1986? Yeah, on top of the milk bottle. Yeah, I have the full picture too, but um, yeah, a hot the, summer day. One of the original Dim Times Guar members, which is always you know, I'm you know, in the scope of Guar, it's a very small period of time, but it's so fascinating to me as a fan because it's kind of like the weirdest time period, the beginning, 
the beginning yeah it's I, sort of like the most mysterious you know right every band i mean it's like how did the beatles start in liverpool and then they kicked out pete west or right you know, yeah ringo's not even an original member like that's interesting right and how did steve tyler meet joe perry and the whole shebang or queen i was watching that bohemian rhapsody yeah at my parents and i was like oh look this is on let's watch it and they were like what's going on and i'm like because they're my like, mom loves that movie for some reason <laughs> and but um yeah the beginning you're like how did this even start like you know i think that's why that documentary you know has its um value and place yeah and there's even more of that on the special features if you all get your blu-ray which is behind me somewhere there's mm -hmm. even more about the origins of guar that focuses oh, really? more on um well they call it the pillars of guar dave mm -hmm. don chuck and hunter mm -hmm. and it's like without those four guys it's kind of like those were like the you know the yeah. beginning the the pillars yeah it makes sense yeah. to me yeah yeah i think so I think so. Muscle, he was around. He was. I would really like to talk to Dave Muscle if anybody can find that guy. Yeah, I don't know where he is, but he. Yeah, I don't think anybody does. Oh really? I think he's sort of off the map. Yeah. Which yeah. is also I respect, you know, if you don't want to talk about it, but I would love to talk about, you know, what? to him. Oh, Muscle. Yeah. Yeah. For mm -hmm. sure, because everyone tells me like Muscle and Scott Crawl and like. Um, somebody else i'll remember his name later mike bonner like oh yeah those guys are the like some of the unsung heroes because they never get any of the credit like dave muscle was never on stage really he was just like behind the scenes guy but without him so much of the operation would be you know stalled and during the formative years bonner and brocky were like twinsies yeah and i was in that era too but and we were right. all doing the milk bottle but like every night like and i don't know i mean like you're you're young and you have so much energy and the world seems so you know open you know and you're not like jaded and sour yet so right. like, yeah that was the milk bottle scene yeah i have some slides of that later we'll definitely <laughs> talk about the milk bottle let me let me start even before guar mm -hmm. um and i'll start with this that i saw you just posted um what what oh. is this and what was your life like before guar oh well i grew up in a big family i have three sisters and a brother and that is actually a photo when we lived in washington grove maryland and my mom had posted this as that painting by singer sergeant john singer sergeant that portrait painter and she just did it on her own but you know she just was like we're taking a photo and so she lit the back of the house that way and placed us all that in those positions and i'm the one on the left um the far left because i was that age because it looks like all of us are about the same age. And that's my little brother and my sister, Pascal's lap. And my other sister, Michelle and Monique in the back, Monique is leaning. Mm -hmm. And we lived a lot of places growing up, like North Carolina, Hawaii, Massachusetts, Maryland. Wow. We built our own house in Virginia. My dad designed it and we all hand built it and it's passive solar. And um, like, yeah, so we moved a lot. And my dad was studying philosophy and kind of Buddhism and things. He was a little bit probably ahead of his time for his generation. And my mom is from the Dutch East Indies, um, mm -hmm. Indonesian Holland. And then after the war, she um, they were really left um, Indonesia because the Japanese had occupied down there. and. Um, She's technically a war refugee, I would think, because she gotcha. moved back to Holland. They had the option. So she moved to Holland and then on a special war asylum refuge. She didn't like the weather in Holland. She moved to New York City and she loved yeah. it. And, you know, um, she always loved the United States. 
Insane. So she ended up working for the CIA a little too. Whoa. Yeah. That sounds like a movie right there. She did write us our books of uh -huh. her stories and in the war and it would be really it's like a storyboard because she's really kind of visual so mm. it would be really interesting and and then she met my father in hawaii on christmas day in waikiki beach in front of the buy entry in front of the surf rider hotel see those are that is like a lot of detail right there yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like cool and then yeah. they, you know we had a poultry guys i mean like Oh, I mean, we had like this weird thing in the house once that we lived in and like, I mean, things move by themselves. So call it what you will. Oh, it was us playing tricks. Okay. Yeah. That's valid. You know, we need the scientific proof, but really like some, you know, unexplainable things did occur, but hmm. you know, to each his own. Cause I know, you know, you go out on that branch and then you're like, there you lose your validity, you know, but I have yeah, seen. Yeah. Not explainable for sure. What um <laughs> did you uh, have a did you have a name for it? What the no, yeah. no, no, we were like locking our toys in and, the yeah, closet. and was it like scary <laughs> in, in the moment? No, we locked the toys in the closet. We were like, We are punishing you, you should not be moving around by yourself. Oh man. <laughs> anyway. And how um was that that was in Hawaii? No, that was in Maryland. Okay. These old rinkety, like cool houses that were built, like you know, in the 1800s or something. And then, the how and there. when did you end up in Richmond? In art school in eighty. Oh, so you went to the art school? Yeah, I went to VCU. Gotcha. I, well, I I hear terrible things about that place. <laughs> the art school or Richmond? No, about their art school. Isn't that kind of like why Guar started? Is because everyone was mad at art school um Mostly. yeah for some people it, it there, i guess it was a combination um i think if you found your niche with your friends it didn't matter who the teachers were in my opinion mm -hmm. because i didn't respect their art so i was right. like why are they telling me what is good or bad so you, you know so it's all subjective and then um yeah, I think that's why some of the people in Guar gravitated towards what they were told was not art, like comic books and things. Right, right. You know? But I wasn't big, that big into comic <laughs> books. But when I was with Dave for so right. long, and he was such a prolific drawer and penmanship person, and he was so fluid, and we'd sit at the village cafe where everyone sat, and he would just draw and write. and. And I was writing and drawing in my journal too, but he really inspired a lot of people to be disciplined artists in mm. my opinion, but he had really fluid, grotesque, humorous type of style. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> uh, did, did you have classes with, with any of the Guar guys? I did with um, Dave because he asked me we had met in Schaefer Court and then... Yeah, that was my next question. How did you meet Dave Brackey? What's oh, the story? Well, everyone met in Schaefer Court, but I think the first time I met him was at the cafeteria and he came in and I could just tell like he had this really positive energy and he had his friends around him that like I could tell liked being around him, but we met in Schaefer Court and... I guess he um, he asked if I was staying for the summer for um, summer classes for the painting studio, and I did, and um, that was when we started hanging out. And I moved in, or I stayed with him at ten twenty eight Franklin Street, and we used to ten twenty eight Franklin Street. Yeah, that's like on Frank. If you go to Richmond, that's where he lived. It's right near the village in VCU. 1028 Franklin. And um, I stayed there for a while. And then um, we used to, you know, ride our bikes all night and go paint at the studios at night and get coffees at 7 Eleven and then go to the river. And nobody had cars. And um, it was good to have a painting partner in the studios. And, you know, he has his own painting i don't know who has some of his paintings after he passed but i mm -hmm. know that you know he had something really 
fine art about part of his talent portfolio too. You know, he could kind of go both ways from, yep, that's it. That's it right there. One. That's the Google one. Maps for you. Yeah. That might as well uh, utilize yeah. the technology here. Yeah. What do you, so what do you remember about this place? Um, he was looking Is it this little red one on the, yeah, the red one. Well, there was like four people living there. His, his friends, Ben and um, Brett and, um, and I don't, I forget who else was living there, but there was, the house was always had, um, you know, it's a party four. house. Four. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. um, Okay, I took this. I found this somewhere on your Facebook. I imagine it's you from around that time. I think so. Yeah, yeah. No wrinkles. No just no wrinkles. Filler, <laughs> like you know. Sure. Yeah. I used to hate that picture, but now right? I'm it's just so hating. like wow. <laughs> you know yeah. how that happens. You're like, oh, I look like crap in that picture, but then you're like, you grow into it. You're like, oh my god. Sure. So, um, we, we, was Death Piggy happening at this time? Yeah, it was. And um, that's kind of the era when Dave and I were hanging out. And then we it leaked into the beginning of Guar and Milk. But, yeah, he was mm -hmm. Death Piggy. And I guess, you know, he he had his, like, like, energy vortex around him and he brought a lot of um inspiration to the scene you know because there was yeah. kind of a scene during that time do you were you part of the scene or did you just kind of go see death piggy no i was part of the scene i'm um, dave i was part of the not in, before i met him but then when dave and i lived together and were together i was we were pretty um you know, aligned. We were kind of inseparable for a while. Mm -hmm. You know, we lived in this one tiny room that the bed, I swear to God, was just a full size bed right by Georgia Myers, who's a really good painter here in Richmond. And she lived next to us, but we lived in this one room because it's all we could afford. And, and both of us, all our stuff started to spill out into the lobby, <laughs> like my Hitler's underpants. And yeah, like, I got that coming up somewhere. Oh, you? Oh, yeah. yeah, we so. can. Let's so let's take a look at that and sure. And tell me what is what am I looking at here? Yeah, a release of tension. I mean, it's like okay. those, that's a pink backwards swastika, and that's his initials age. Those are Hitler's underpants. They for this sculpture they hang on barbed wire, and I had made these big oversized old fashioned wooden clothes pins, and I made a sock, but that's not in the photo. But I wanted to put those on Gorgor at one oh. time. And everyone, Dave kind of wanted to, but I don't think Hunter was like, Ugh, you know, like, yeah. you know, Hunter, um, you know, I think everybody, I just thought it'd be funny if the dinosaur came out there with Hitler's underpants, like they were both so bad, but I, it didn't happen and that's okay. But um, I- Don't worry, they, they've killed versions of Hitler since then, so. Yeah, it wasn't <laughs> yeah. happening. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then of course like the Nazi skinhead the uh, from Slaughterama and stuff oh, like yeah. that. Yeah. So, um, what? So I always hear Death Piggy shows were just pretty wild. What do you remember about Death Piggy shows? Well, or is there any like specific memories you have from from any? Well, um, he had a zillion bands, Dave. Um, I want to talk about that too. Yeah. Um. Well, no, Death Piggy. I just. Um, I mean, I guess like I, he was like, I don't know, like he, he hit the zeitgeist of that era because, you know, he was punk and cute and funny and creative and, and like he got along with both male and female, you know, like, so the boys are, were always like Dave, oh, like, he's so cool, and and I and same with um, girls. Girls are like always liked him. So I don't know. He's a pretty magnetic person, but his death piggy shows. Mm -hmm. I just kind of 
when and in a way like it made me want to be in a band because it was like god they're having so much fun and they're bringing up the energy of the room they're bringing up like like the a reason to be alive in this moment of this generation you know so yeah i think he was one of the main people in richmond who did that but there's other richmond bands obviously because there was a scene yeah like white cross unforeseen forces alternatives like, alternatives of course yeah they all became members of guar yeah mud helmet right i mean yeah. we were all like in retrospect we were all kids right we yeah. like that book patty smith just kids it's like when we were like in retrospect and i see kids that age now and i'm like oh my god they they can drive and they, you know like because <laughs> we know. were that young like and and i can see that now but yeah there was a lot of bands um cashmere jungle lords or, yeah right yeah yeah a ton uh you had mentioned and this is something people don't talk about enough i think is that Dave had other bands. Like he had all sorts of weird bands, concept bands. Do you remember what any of them were, and were they funny? <laughs> or, yeah. Uh, and I, I know one of them was with you called Milk. So tell us about yeah. that as well. Milk was based, formed, birthed out of the dairy, and I played keyboards. And Ron Curry, Jim Thompson, Matt Linkus, Tim Harris. Um, Wow, okay. Yeah, these and, are, this is where we can start getting into the dairy too, yeah. I guess. We all, I lived there at, it, in the round part. I lived during the winter, but my the uh, my milk bottle other, part, the round part, the big bottle. Oh wow, where that and picture then, was taken. Yeah, oh, it, it turned picture. into winter while we were living there. But I, my other studio was to the right on the third floor. This is in that milk bottle, right? Yeah, and the early day the early lineup of the the costume. Um, those were all hunters right. who made those. And I guess maybe Chuck was working with them. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, yeah, so tell me about Milk. What was the concept of Milk? That was really a performance art band and literally like- There it had, is. Yeah, you're, you're in the family tree. Yeah. Milk, Colette Miller, Dave Brocky, Ron Curry, Jim Thompson, Tim Harris, Matt Linkus. Yeah. 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 They were Tim all Harris ended up in Capone and, and played some on some good guitar on some Guar albums later on. And I think and he's a good painter also. Oh cool. I'd love to talk to Tim Harris. Yeah, yeah. you should talk to him. Yeah, I should. I love Capone. Yeah. I think it's Keypone. Keypone. Not Capone. Keypone. Like, uh, Wait, got it. Al Capone. It's yeah. Like, All right. Keep on. Yeah. It's like keep on factory. Right. Exactly. Yes, the yes. Still in the Hopewell area, the chemicals that were in the river. Uh, yeah. But Milk was a performance art band, basically. I play keyboards and I do have a. I took piano as a kid. So I had like the basic, you know, musical. You could read music and things. But um, we never developed the music, mm -hmm. unfortunately, but it was mostly performance art, like props. And it was really kind of spontaneous combustion last minute. It really, you know, like. What does that mean? <laughs> it, it so, like, like, what, like, did you play shows and what would happen at them? And well, like, what was the music I, like? I remember meeting, like, for a couple shows, like, and a couple of times we opened for Guar. I remember okay. in rockets and, and we had to switch costumes. What was your costume in milk? Uh, just whatever we wanted to wear. Gotcha. Was, but, but like right before the show, like an hour or two before we would meet at the rehearsal space or the milk bottle and kind of come up with ideas and then, mm -hmm. and just kind of run with them, you know, and just turn on at the moment, you know, deliver. You know, because it's about delivery, you know, so. Was Mark, was was Mark Linkus Sparkle Horse brother? Oh, yeah. And I, Sparkle Horse was good also. That's another rich movie. Was Mark Linkus mm -hmm. someone's brother in that? Matt and Mark. Matt and Mark. What was Sparkle Horse? 
do you know that band? Because they're really. It sounds familiar, but I, I mean, never heard it in context to uh, Richmond. I, just, I, I just like there's been so many like I mean Richmond really did have a musical, uh, you know, you know, with one it's like a small Seattle. Or something. Mm -hmm. What do you remember any of the other weird bands that Dave Rock was in? Like he was in um, Dr. Brown and he, and I had Dr. made this. Brown. Little, I never heard of that one. Well, it was like two shows. Right. No, I'm sure they all were. <laughs> yeah. And Derriere with Jim Diaz. I've heard of that one. Yeah. Honor. Like what was the difference between those bands? Do you, well, do you remember them Mr. at all? Mr. Brown was, he was just on his own and, and he was wearing this brown like tunic. <laughs> and I had made this little fiberglass guitar in art school with rubber bands for the strings and he took it to play and um and it was i don't know like i think dave was a true performer and so whatever he touched when he was on stage or when he was interviewed was you know i don't know it like it for he never failed almost mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Even if it sucked, he never sailed. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's some guar that sucks too. <laughs> but it doesn't fail because you're just like, but that's not what it's about. No, at, exactly. At yeah. this show, it's not about the music or that. It's about the energy, you know, mm -hmm. the commitment. So okay. what, you can skip this one if you want, but what was Dave like as a boyfriend? Um, He when we first met it was um like we had the honeymoon magical era going to the river and i painted these sunflowers at night it was like all fertile and moonlight and dark greens and dark blues and reds and stars and and nature because we spent a lot of time in nature and it was really lovely and um you know and it and it kind of crossed over with actual true production because we were disciplined as you know painters like we would go to the painting studios together to paint and then like he was in all these bands and i kept wanting you know and i was like god that you know i wish i was in a band and then um that's why i guess milk kind of started you know, because, you know, I are wanted there, to. Are there any photos or recordings of Milk? Um, any, I think Adam you know of? might have one. Who? Adam Green. Oh, Who I've heard that name before. Yeah. Around, Adam Green is a good friend, was a good friend of Dave's. And then um, Ron Curry was, um, I think he might have one, but we did this one song and I only had one key to press on the keyboard. It was like. I am your dad. And I would have to press the E. Hmm. Every time he went, I am your dad. E! <laughs> was, I am your dad. And then Dave was up front. So I, I remember that like complicated um, musical structure. Right. <laughs> and my keyboard, I didn't have one and it kept getting smaller and smaller. And I would <laughs> get these, I was down to at the very end, those miniature pianos. <laughs> I was like, ding. Why? Just because it was funnier that way? Well, also, there was a flood at the milk bottle. And wow. Melanie Mandel had lent me her keyboard. And by the grace of God, I had put her keyboard on some table and everything got flooded. Mm -hmm. And she had come by to pick it up because I was irresponsible and young and self-centered, probably. And so I was like, ah, I'm running around. And then. She was like, where's my keyboard? So she went by the milk bottle after the flood and she totally thought I would have had, I would have like ruined it along with everything else that was ruined, but it was sitting pristinely on top of a table. Yeah. You can ask Melanie about that. Yeah, she I'd like to talk to her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, she was involved with Gore for a while too, right? Yeah, and filming and also- um, Yeah, like didn't, um, wasn't she one of, one of the directors of their movies? <laughs> So you should yeah. talk to her. She told me a little bit about um, being on the bus with them. Oh, yeah. The bus is always a fascinating thing to talk about. 
Yeah, you that should, was after your time, though, right? You didn't I see the bus. See the bus. I was not on the bus, so like, yeah. So, you know, like, good and bad. Sometimes I'm like, oh my god, I dodged that bullet. Right. Exactly. Yeah. It's like nostalgia, but did you really want to experience yeah. that? <laughs> that must have been a smelly bus. Yeah, but I mean, priceless memories for them, for sure. Oh, sure. Yeah. I don't think they'd want to do it again, though. <laughs> Leave it in the past. To, you need to be young. Yeah. I mean, well, you need to have the intent and energy behind it because they ran on no money. Sure. Yeah, I think they probably still basically run on no money. Right. Oh, really? I thought. Oh, they I mean, I'm sure they make just enough to live, but I don't think they're living extravagant lifestyles or anything like that, you know? Yeah. I hope they're doing well. I'm not, you know, yeah, definitely too. better than they did back then, but yeah, I think they still pretty much put everything back into the art. You know, it's kind of the same thing, just bigger. But they have a lot of merchandise now, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good, I have a question for you mm -hmm. in that respect. Uh, let me put this again. <laughs> did you ever think... And then we'll talk about the origins of Guar, but did you ever expect this? Um, have you seen this yet? Um, no, I have not. Is that from Guar? These are official Guar cuttlefish of Cthulhu toys, and those are that's the large model, and that's a, a can of a can for comparison. <laughs> and that's just a toy, like a it's a sex toy. Oh, it is? Is it? Is I mean, it, I don't know if anyone could practically use that fucking thing, but um, yeah, Bad Dragon is a sex toy store, and they made all these cuttlefish did, toys. Did they license with Guar? Oh, yeah. This is their official website. Yeah, oh, this okay. is a real thing that just happened. Wow. I did yes. not. Wow. Well, well, I mean, I could see, I could imagine the direction they headed that that they would do that but well i mean that's you know odorous is right well you know fish that lives between his legs oh <laughs> well, yeah interesting I, um, I hadn't seen it you hadn't seen it yeah that's yeah. that's the latest uh guar merchandise wow <laughs> did you ever expect that <laughs> no i didn't no what what did you expect? What okay. tell me a little bit about what you remember about Guar forming because you were pretty much there from the beginning, right? Yeah, um, Hunter and Heather and Brocky, me, um, we, we were, I met them in the milk bottle, not Brocky, but Heather. Heather right. was always really cool to me, like, we kind of palled out for a while, and, and actually, she actually sold a painting for me in San Francisco and I lived with her yes. in New York. Oh, wow. I ran into her and, and, and I always kind of admired her because I thought she was this like unusually strong and independent and beautiful woman that was attracted to like the hunter world. And I'm like- mm -hmm. Yeah, they, she was Hunter's girlfriend, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and I'm like, what is this beautiful girl doing? here in this scene right. and I'm, i go so there's got to be something wrong with her no, uh -huh. you know because like she was like well there I, must be something wrong with you too then right <laughs> probably yeah probably everybody everybody yeah everybody, yeah yeah probably everybody on the planet if if you actually well if we do math <laughs> i don't know this looks pretty fun to me yeah it was fun what but yeah, um, so I loved, that was in the summer of 86, and that is still, um, Joey Slutman, I think, is still singing. And I think that might have been after the Flood Zone show and before the Shape for Court show. Mm -hmm. And um, Yeah, because there is a Gorgor here, so. Yeah, the, gore, the camouflage Gorgor, yeah. And that's I the Gorgor you wanted to put those uh, Hitler's underpants on. Yeah like militarize him mm -hmm. you know? mm. yeah but um whatever and mm -hmm. then I, I remember having an argument about i wanted to make this 
um, yellow hammer and everybody was, Hunter was like, sure, yeah. Like, so everyone had their own ideas and I actually right. wanted more. Yeah, well, yeah, I'd love to hear what yeah. your ideas were, whether they were used or not, because I know his policy was uh, don't talk about it, do it, right? Um, yeah, but I got, you kind of sort of had to work as a um, collective and, mm -hmm. and we would have weekly meetings and we sketched out the premise for the performance and like the big Schaefer court show. Would... Yeah. We're going to, that will be a whole section of this. Trust me. Yeah. Oh, okay. So well, I guess we're leading into it, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So in the early days, um, <clears throat> Hunter, I met Hunter and Heather and Hunter had made, making these costumes and they put them on Heather as a week. And I know that Hunter was, um, you know, showing his costumes but it wasn't guar yet it was scum dogs and then right, the movie. first bar show was pb kelly's mm -hmm. and were you there because you i know you weren't part of it yet but were you there i was and i went with brocky and we had climbed up on the roof across the street of pb kelly's and um we were like making out and everything. And then we had, he had to go down and perform. And so we went down into PB Kelly's and climbed down off of the roof. And then like, I don't know. I think everybody just in that audience knew that it was. Um, I think I have a flyer somewhere. Nope, that's the wrong, that's coming up next. Well, this is that time period. Yeah, that's the time period. I think I had a flyer for PB Cows. Whatever, we've played that show on this on this show before. Yeah. And then um yeah, and then I went back to the drawing board and the milk bottle and I I think that all the people um there in the audience at PB Kelly joined Guar basically. <laughs> <laughs> you, also, you look at that show, everyone's like, "Oh, there's uh there's Scott. Uh, there's I can do uh, that, but yeah. like, um, but like, no, it's just like kind of still tongue in cheek and funny and like, like making fun of society. Like it was yeah, like I think it's still like that. That is still what yeah. Guar really is is a satire on society. Yeah, it is, and it's like the divine comedy of humanity. You know, like just that. Like, what are we taking ourselves so serious? And and it's a it's actually did you did you take yourself seriously? Um, or did they? No. Well, you had it was an oxymoron, and right? I, because you had to take yourself serious to actually get things done and do it. But but it's just so silly, yeah. Yeah, but yeah, and then I don't think that um, like, no, if you um. If you took yourself too seriously, it became not mean funny and mean. <laughs> right. You know, like it didn't become like light. Like it like, but you had to walk that tightrope because I mean they do still, I'm sure, because mm -hmm. they actually have a real business and the world isn't easy. There's so many moving parts, you know. Yeah. Well, have you well, I guess we're skipping around, but um I'm skipping around. Have you heard the new record or have you cut like I did? I actually when the Mike Bishop or somebody put it up, I listened to it and I saw that video, the cartoon one, and I was mm -hmm. like, it's almost surf. It's the rat catcher almost... song, yeah, it's very poppy. And I was thinking they could go mainstream, which that's kind of the joke of that song is like when they play it live, they're like, this is our radio hit, you know, like put us on the radio. Well, let's sell out, you know. And there's nothing wrong with reaching more people if that's what's mm -hmm. called mainstream, the mainstream people. That's like with the global. But it's still funny. It's still guar. It's still a satire. It's right. Know. I mean, uh, I, I, it's hard for me to hear the lyrics. I have to look at the lyrics, but. Right. right. Well, that one's about. It's called Rat Catcher. Oops. Yeah. I'm not. Rat catcher. I'm not gonna get caught with the audio, but I'll throw up the visuals. 
Oops. Um, rat catcher is about the story of the rat catcher, basically, except, uh, so in this, um, Mike Bishop's character, Blothar, is hired to get rid of the town rats and they didn't pay him. So they steal all their children, like the Pied Piper. Like he like, he relates all of this back to like old literature and like the oldest stories. Who did the artwork? Um, I'm not sure their name, but I think That's they had worked on an old, they had worked on a video for the Blood of Gods album before this, which was like a fan video that they modified to be official. Uh -huh. And I think then they probably hired him to do this one. Yeah, because I, I, it was just there to catch, you know, and and it almost sounded wholesome. Yeah, Which they would hate somebody to describe Guar as wholesome, but like I was like, it's. I think that's the point of this song, though. You yeah. get it. You get it. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Uh, but the album, have you? Did you like? I of heard the themes of the more. album. I heard a few more and whatever, all their musicianship from um, when, when people were kids and doing bands and they're not kids anymore. They're all in their fifties, maybe almost like yeah. all. Um, I think Pustulus is about my age, which blows my mind, but everyone else I think is in their fifties, maybe even sixties, some of the older guys. So there's like when, when Hunter and Chuck comes back, come back and do the shows like they are in their 60s right so they're seasoned musicians now oh yeah so they can actually have that dexterity and hunter's in great shape for 60 or whatever oh my god he's in the best shape of his life basically no. like he does yeah, that was, rest, the wrestling stuff. Than ever you're like oh <laughs> right yeah. Hunter looks like good yeah yeah and it was great because i got to see him play in new york on the scum dogs anniversary tour mm -hmm. and he, he was having so much fun oh my god he was just like i can finally take my wrestling skills on the road you know yeah but the rest of the album um thematically i think it's kind of smart because it's still very much guar versus society and what's happening yeah and um like the story behind the comic book and the stage show that goes with it is that all the conspiracy theories of the world are true in this alternate dimension the do-overse yeah. which is like their take on the marvel multiverse kind of thing mm -hmm. and it also because mike bishop's like a professor of music and he's i guess fascinated with like and you know um not ancient maybe ancient but like old stories and literature this he recognizes the themes in the world are very much like the dark ages. Right. So that's why it's the new dark ages. I think it's pretty smart. I don't know. People, people like to hate on it because they hate everything new, but I think it's the, like new the dark, best war album. The new dark ages is very relevant because it's almost like the Renaissance of the United States or yeah. the Western civilization took a dive and yeah we, and there was plague and conspiracy and like you know and some of the conspiracies it goes back that far like the mm -hmm. you know who it's i don't know it's crazy <laughs> that we're here but guar's still making fun of it and i think that's great like you know yeah um uh, okay let's go backwards again mm -hmm. i want to know a little bit about this so that's that's heather right yeah and you as um so you were amazina where did the name amazina come from mm, if you remember uh oh i don't know and at, and at some point were you just guar woman or was that yeah i was i was guar woman or guar girl or mm -hmm. amazina it was pretty interchangeable right. and it wasn't locked down. And, and Heather was Guar girl, a Guar woman before she was wearing the leopard thing for the show at PB Kelly's. And this right, is she, first she was wearing what you were wearing, right? Right. That and Hunter made that. And then I, yeah, he still, his girls still look, have those kind of outfits on. He, he's very consistent like that. Well, I like that look. Yeah. I, it's great. You know, 
I like that little rough, like unfinessed look. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. more like Bam Bam or something. Right. I mean, yeah, yeah. Stones, you know, I, I kind of like the unpolished look, but you know, that's per preference. But yeah, so she was the temptress. That's right. her show at the flood zone. And we had met at, um, you know, in the milk bottle and we befriended each other. We were buddies for a while. She talked me into getting a mohawk. <laughs> and I have, have any pictures of that? I think that, that hat, my horns cover that. Oh, gotcha. But, yeah, because she got the mohawk and she's like, you get a mohawk. And then she, then like she stormed off one day. War, fuck war. And it's not going anywhere. Fucking Richmond or something. I'm going to mm -hmm. Detroit. And I think Hunter followed her. This is might right, be right yeah. after this show. Right. So she really did PVs and flood zone. And I did that and I did modify my costume and I did make props. I made these, this dinosaur tooth necklace that mm. when I was kicked out of Guar, I tossed it. Cause I was like, Ugh. Oh man. I that would go, someone what? would want that for the Guar museum now. I wish I, I did not do that act of rage or whatever it was. Sure. Cause I, I was like, Darn, it was the dinosaur tooth necklace. I don't have, that's at the Schaefer court. Show. Yeah, yeah. That's what yes. we'll get into next for sure. Yep. Um, but okay, I want to, I want to know about the characters. What was the lore? Did you have lore? Even if it wasn't set on stage, like what was your character well, motivation? It, you know, like, did you make any of that stuff up for these characters? Yeah, well, originally during that incarnation of that 400 year of Guar, yeah, it was the um, Antarctica story and the ozone hairspray story mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. melted everybody. And everybody came up and then Sleazy or, um, Sle or Sluggo, P. Martini, right. and Sluggo. Sleazy. And Sluggo was hilarious because Tim Herman, because he was just like, he didn't, he didn't even have to act. He was just like a bad manager incarnate. And mm -hmm. so um, that was the flood zone. I think he fell down or fell off the stage or something. I but think, let me see if this is, um, I think it's this one. This might have some footage <laughs> from the flood zone shows. Were you, was it, were you in the Guar must be destroyed video? Do you know? It might have been. Let's let's let it play and we'll yeah, see if we see you. Because I think there's some flood zone footage in here, maybe. Uh, I haven't seen much footage. Right. There's probably. I mean, whatever is out there is in the in the archives, locked up somewhere. Hmm. So you do see some clips of it in the documentary, and you're like, I, I know. I'm like, oh my god, I want to see this. You know, I love see, this old footage. See, the storytelling was hunters. Yeah, yeah. And that was a good direction for Do Guar. you remember anything about the Scum Dogs movie? Um, I was a little bit because I was in the milk bottle with Hunter, yeah. but no, the Scum Dog movies was Hunters and Chucks. I mean I was Who's that? that? Is that Sluggo? No, that is my Moore, Michael Moore or something. That's Michael Moore. Okay, so he shot a lot of video footage too. Yeah, and Ted um Sanderson. Oh, yes, right? he shot. Yeah. So is this the flood zone? Can you recognize it? I'm not sure. It could be the flood zone. It looks kind of small for the stage though. Mm. Um flood zone stage is kind of big. Okay. Maybe no, this is a little bit past your time. I'm not sure. So what? Um, no, that's not past my time. That's no, it's not. It's, yeah. Okay. Yeah, we'll let it play. See if you pop up anywhere. What was this? Was there any um, mythos specifically for your character that you remember? Um, basically, I was just on the side of Guar. It was like, you know, if there was two camps and then Hunter and Heather were going to be like the enemy. And I had talked with Heather about that. And right. I, right. Because who, who was I talking to? Uh, Hunter, when he was on the show, 
right? Yeah. You would popped into the chat and you were like, no, no, that was just our characters fighting on stage, right? Mm -hmm. No, but um, I did a serial commercial. Yeah, I have pictures of that coming up. And I was just... Oh, wait, who's that? Is that you? No, that's Heather, right? Yeah, it's Heather. That's P.B. Kelly's. Okay. Gotcha, yeah. Do you... It's what um do you remember any of the other like non-guar projects that were happening with these guys at the time or were there any non-guar projects what do you mean like yeah like i know hunter and chuck like made some short films and stuff like that um i i knew everyone was drawing comics and i was painting paintings in the milk bottle and mm -hmm. i knew that other bands were going on and the Chateau of Sin is where Delaney, Mike Delaney, and Chuck. Oh, yeah. I have some there. pictures of that somewhere. And then Hunter was right. Caddy Corner and um, Don had his studio, and he was painting these big paintings of women defending themselves against rapists. Oh, wait, were, Don was? Don Dracula. Yeah, and okay. I, and they were big. They were like eight by six or something. And Here's some pictures of the dairy. Yeah. There's the sin, right? Yeah, the Chateau of Sin. And yeah. Chuck used to always play the tubes. But I would think that um, I didn't understand why, uh, like, Dawn's paintings, like, I didn't know if he was like showcasing the rape or the right. rape, rapist. You know, I was like, which side, you know, like. Maybe I'll ask him next time I, he's on this podcast, yeah. if he comes back. Uh, have you kind of conservative looking in the paintings, you know, like Nancy Drew or something. Like uh huh. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. I guess we should talk about Schaefer Court. Mm-hmm. Because Which I've never seen that video. But. I don't have any video. I mean, the only pieces of video I've seen is from the documentary. Uh -huh. So I'm like, God damn it. Like, put that show out. I will buy that in a second. Any yeah. of this old stuff. Like, right. that's gold to me. Especially Shape Record is so... Pivotal. I don't know. Mi pivotal and, like, mythological to me. That I'm just kind of, like, fascinated with it. And it was the time where everybody worked really hard and then they realized that after the show that there, we it, it was kind of solidified that they the um that this could go somewhere the, right hit on something you know yeah like, which is ironic because most people quit after this show right <laughs> i didn't quit no you didn't quit uh but i think a lot of people like, is chris bopes and jim and Ottinger. I think they just had other things to do. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. I mean, Guar is seems like a time suck. You know, you really got to be dedicated to it. Yeah. Yeah. So here's, I think these are some rehearsal photos for it. And that's the unpainted Chernobyl cockroach. And mm -hmm. I made the raid can. You made that? What did you make that out of? Um, that thing is huge. Cardboard and, um, I think we worked with styrofoam and wood glue at the time, but then we fitted it so we could put the um, fire extinguisher in there. And mm. Don was working on the Chernobyl cockroach. And I was thinking it would have been good because it was a nuclear survivor from the Chernobyl accident. If the cockroach had been left kind of pale and white, like mm. he had been nuked out, but they ended up painting him big and brown. Right. And I kind of, personally preferred the kind of pale like you know radioactive out roach look but don had built that and i think at the show at schaefer court i sprayed the raid can and it kind of um i sprayed i think it kind of suffocated him he told oh, me no. yeah not intentionally but right well yeah because he made the the hose thing too right he kind of did it to himself yeah, because yeah, <laughs> yeah, but that was there's Don, and that's Tim Harris. That's Tim Harris. Oh, mm -hmm. cool. 
Yeah. Was he in the band at the time? Yeah, he was playing. Um, I guess oh, wow. guitar, bass. I don't know. Right. I think I can guitar. So this is more rehearsal. Yeah, and you see a little guar cereal in the corner. Yeah, yeah, we'll see that in a second. Some of the the terrorists. That's, um, the slob, Bob the slob. Bob the slob. Yeah, right. He, right. The terrorist and Chuck, I guess, in the. Yeah, I think that's Chuck. Who's in the middle here? I'm not sure. It's hard to see. Yeah. It looks like Bender or something. And that's um Nas Nasly Nazi and and I think Jenna. I think that's Jenna and Nasly Nazi. Uh mm -hmm. she was nice. They were both nice. So <laughs> can you explain like the importance of this show? I think those were terrorists. Yeah, oh, I think so. I think the news and the, in a way Guar premeditated the news like i remember cardinal sin and and certain things they were bringing up like the catholic priest scandal mm -hmm. like they almost were psychically like or read into what the future um you know media would push and so a lot of the characters and a lot of the um you know tragic tragedies and travesties on stage were predated towards before some of these um like newspapers came out like I right know. oh i'm sure it's sure it's been a long rumor that the church was uh doing things like that right that they picked up on yeah i mean i guess i mean unfortunately let's so talk. here's chuck. i guess prepping for the show there's chuck with the um the, yeah, the plane crash. Yeah. So here's some people from the audience. I don't know if you know any of these I people. I do know. Oh, what's his name? I do know him. And credit to the photographers. I should really have their names up here, but um, let's see if I can. No, I don't have them here. Oh, you know, credit to the photographers. They're awesome. I don't. I don't know. Is that? <laughs> I don't know. That's yeah. Who who knows? That's Dirt Woman, right? Yeah, it's Dirt Woman. All right. So here's the show. What's what is going on? Just everyone who's ever known Guar is part of this show. I feel like. Yeah. Bob. And every time I talk to someone about it, I I hear new details. Like somebody told me there was a character called the Watcher who just sat there and watched the show. <laughs> I want to. I want the backstory on the Watcher. Maybe that was Neon Charlie. You did the Neon. There is you. Uh huh. And who's uh who's Balsack here? Is that uh, Chris Bobst? It no. might be Bobst. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Mm -hmm. And Don on the right. Yeah, Don. Don. Is this was was maybe maybe one of Don's first shows as Sleazy. Maybe first show us. Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. So and what he, can you just tell the audience if you don't know, like what was Schaefer Court? Schaefer Court was Halloween in Richmond. I mean, the, the area, like the, the space itself. It was the courtyard of the university in DC, Virginia Commonwealth. Wealth University, and there was a big courtyard with a stage, and it was brick, and there was, I guess, um, slate um, in the front, and had a, a brick um, background, and it was a focal point for gathering of the university students, almost like in Socrates' times, where you could mm -hmm. come together and discuss ideas. And since then, they modified it. I do not know why. Just like other things. Yeah, like I heard it doesn't really exist anymore, right? Like, it's not. No, they, they anymore. money came in from Qatar or Kuwait or some. I don't know. Hmm. And VCU grew, and they built a huge museum. Uh, but uh, they lost a lot of its old um, intellectual gathering charm moments and in my hum opinion, and I don't know. And, and, you know, a lot of things have changed about Richmond that I don't think sure. was wise. I mean, this was quite some time ago. Right. Uh, yeah. 
tragedy of the common. The progress isn't always the right direction. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's a, the Guar cereal. Yeah, so this is the cereal. Can you, so what, let's. And that's my yellow hammer that I had to fight for. Oh yeah, there's your hammer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what's the story with the yellow hammer? Yeah. And also, what what was, do you remember like the general storyline of this show and why is there a cereal commercial in the middle of it? <laughs> well, there was a cereal commercial. It was our sponsor and there was a cereal commercial I think even at the flood zone and mm -hmm. it was just basically in my opinion like a a punk on capitalism and an hour word from our sponsor i would come out and i would mm -hmm. pour the cereal and I'd have the box and the musicians would come out from behind their drum kit and everything and and i'd pour it in the bowls but uh the there was like a i heard there was like a off to the side of the stage, like a news anchor sort of setup. Like there was like a whole meta sort of thing going on. Yeah. I don't know. Really? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> That's why it's so interesting to me. Everyone remembers something different. But I didn't like, hear uh, anything. But the, the, the serial was a play on um, advertising and capitalism and the corruption um, of you know, that which became America, you know. Do you America. remember what the actual cereal was in the box? Um, I think it was played as, you know, like, you know how cereals like Frosted Flakes, and I think they turned it into crack in that, in their videos in the, you know, Phallus in Wonderland. And mm, yeah, yeah, sure. No, but I mean, like, was there actual a real brand of cereal in that box that was mm, it might out? Be, um like frost? I don't know if it was Frosted Flakes or some type of. It wasn't Fruit Loops or anything. Mm. I, I remember seeing flakes. Right. You know, like, so you know, it was more like the flake. Is this is this just audience more audience members? I guess. I guess so. Because it, it's hard to tell who's a part of Guar and who's not. Right, that it looks like it was Halloween. Yeah, exactly. So there is Hunter, the classic hunter in um, in bondage situation. <laughs> right. And so he was the arch enemy of the show, or he what, always, what was his storyline here? Do you remember? Um. Yeah, Techno is angry at Guar, and he comes to take back what is rightfully his and base you know it's a basic you know villain story but since guar isn't quite the angels themselves i guess it was a little more complex but mm -hmm. you look like you're having a blast here in this picture i was it was a good day yeah yeah there's dave you even had the sin and the over here. Yeah. There's you. What's that you're holding? Um, probably the mace and the hammer. Oh, okay. Hammer on the right and the mace, because I swung the mace, you know, a lot. Was it um I don't know what the weather's like in Virginia, but it looks like you guys might have been cold. That day, no, it was no. only October. Okay. And I think you're like pumped up and you're not. Sure. Right. Yeah. Youth energy. But it wasn't even that cold that night. It was just October. Mm hmm. And what? Because sometimes in New York it's cold on October. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it depends. That's Jenna in the back. I think she was a terrorist. Yeah. What was the plot line? Do you remember the terrorist plot line? I think you remember it? it wasn't an exact plot line with Shape for Court, but there was a series of media events like the plane crash, and then the terrorists come out, and then Techno, and then the dinosaur comes out, and then the Chernobyl cockroach. And I don't think there was a fluid storyline. Mm. And I kind of thought that if there was a more fluid storyline, like I think that Hunter probably wanted that mm -hmm. the, the whole thing might have made more like beginning, middle, end sense, but- Yeah, I mean, they definitely perfected that now, you know. Like beginning, middle, end, like a story, but 
um, then I don't think anyone could, there, everyone was just like, wow, there's an airplane. There's this, mm -hmm. there wasn't uh, like, but there was ideas of a story right. you know, at the meeting. And I sang Americanized. Or oh, I was going to say, yeah, are you singing here? You're I, an American. Well, I sang Americanized because I was like, I want, I asked Dave if I, you know, wanted to, so. This is a side question, but I wanted to ask anyways, um, were you on the demos that they did at You can all? hear me a little bit. Because I know it's just a kind of like a mess, but there's a lot of voices in the background. No, I, um, Bob Gorman sent me that one mm -hmm. day. Out, he called me up or emailed me, and he said that, um, hey, we made the demo from there, and um, you're on there a little bit, or you can hear your... Yeah, you're you're listed in the credits actually. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So I guess those were like the Joey Slutman era. I don't know. There's some Joey stuff, and then no, some I think other stuff. Rocky. I don't think okay. Joey's on that. I don't. Yeah, there are two different sessions on here. I think one of them Slutman, and one of them is Brocky. Um, let's go back to Schaefer Car. Let's see what we got here. So that's Americanized. Yeah. That's cool. How did you feel like as, as a lead singer? Um, I liked it and I I did other bands later in my life. But um the song, you know, it was all you know new and fresh. Mm -hmm. Who's that? It looks like Jim Thompson. Do you remember what character this was? Um Hans something. Hans Finkter? No, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, because he was in Milk, too. Oh, okay. he was the drummer, right? Yeah, he's a okay. good drummer. He's a nice person. Nice. Yeah. Jim Thompson. Was he in the alternatives? Yeah. Okay. Drummer. His mother. Look at all those cool weapons. <laughs> he lives in Front Royal. His, I mean, his mother, his family has a farm out there. So. Oh, cool. So there, that's a better view of like Schaefer Court, like the stage. Yes, and uh huh. That's cool, Dave. Yeah. There's you. Uh huh. So what? As we're going through these, what? It was this your last show with Guar? No, I, you, you said you I, counted them. You did like six of them. What do you What do you remember I, about that? I did front New Horizons, and I did rockets a couple times i think after this okay was it a different band after this yeah uh the alternative um bowed out or whatever or they got busy and then i think um, yeah they were like doing albums and going on tour and stuff they were a more serious outfit at the time i think they were on sst yeah mm -hmm. no I, th I think that they'd still yeah there's that famous uh, shot of Hunter. Yeah. There's Gorgor. Who was playing Gorgor? Was that Chuck? I think it was Don. Don? Yeah. Uh, Don that's, was both. That's my Schaefer Court photo album. Oh, cool. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was a show. I would like to see the um, video. I've never seen it. Me too. <laughs> uh, well, let maybe we'll skip there. Um, this is something I usually ask people at the beginning, but what did you think of the documentary? Um, and how did you get involved in the documentary? Um, I don't know. I was contacted by, um, I guess, the producer and Scott, I guess, Bill. But I don't know. I guess they found my contact online, and so I responded and then um they made arrangements to come by my studio in los angeles and um they were they came by with a pretty professional crew and it was really succinct and uh that was it and they asked me questions and i answered as best i could and um you know I get, you know, they're trying to do a story beginning, middle, end, you know, so that's how I met them. I, they just contacted me through email. I guess they had found my contact online mm -hmm. or whatever. Maybe they asked somebody. I don't know. I never asked them that. And how did you feel about, 
you know, when you saw it, did you, did you what did you think about it? The documentary, yeah. I think that it is an overwhelming project that they took on with so many sure. yeah. twists and turns. And I think I they picked some really good um, sound bites. And um, I thought Danielle looked great in it. And um, I thought that um, everybody spoke well. And I, I heard maybe Chuck wasn't represented enough. And I think they're probably right. I think nobody was represented enough. And that's just an <laughs> overall problem. How can you fit Guar into two hours? That's yeah. Like, and then, impossible. Okay, right. And the other people in even the beginning of Guar, like Steve mm -hmm. Douglas or the <laughs> alternator guys, it's just sort of like they never, you know, um, like the beginning messy part in the milk. That's bottle. what I wanted to do this show for because I, Scott, Scott was my first guest. I think you, you probably saw that. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And I said, my biggest gripe with the documentary is that I didn't get to make it, but I'm so close as a fan to the material that my version will be 10 hours long and I'd want to talk to every single person. So instead of making a documentary, I figured why don't I just talk to everybody here on YouTube, you know? Yeah. So I do want to hear, everybody talk about that like no matter how if you were in guar for like a day or for you know 30 years i think both of those perspectives are interesting right um yeah. and i i mean yeah in the documentary i thought it came out pretty well of course i'm not in guar so i don't have that personal i think everybody who's been in guar who's seen it has gripes with it just because they're so close to the material it's like you're putting their life on screen how do you represent that well you know and especially because everyone in the band has such an ego <laughs> right you and know which, even, which is it's just great in, in its own way right and uh, each person has her own memory mm -hmm. brain so they're only remembering their through their experience and their eye that I remember this. It's like, that's why witnesses are so flaky in court. You're like, right. you know? Yeah. Well, that's a whole nother podcast. We could talk about how memories are just, you know, it's like opening a file in your brain. And every time you think of it, it's like a refresh and it changes a little bit. And that's right. a whole nother so sciencey thing. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Oh yeah. I, I don't remember where I got this picture from, but I wanted to show just because you're wearing a Death Piggy t-shirt. Oh, yeah. That's the day I think Brocky died. In oh, that. wow. Really? Or that's my friend TK, TK Nagano. He lives in L.A. That's in L.A. But I'm wearing the Death Piggy shirt because um, Brocky has passed. And um, I had, the other side is this thing with the photo of him that Catherine Leatherwood took. Um, you know, the one where that good photo with, he looks all like mm, yeah. dirty. And, I think I have that somewhere. Yeah, she took that photo. Let's see. Maybe maybe it's in here somewhere. I have my, my death piggy record. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I actually have, do you have any remnants from back then? Like, do you have any old death piggy records and stuff like that? Are you a collector in that way? Like drawings in my notebook from Dave and he gave me this like diary and things. Oh, wow. but, I know, do have but, one original Death Piggy record that came in some Dave comics called Mr. Donut. Oh yeah, Mr. Donut. These are some originals. Yeah. Oh that's pretty cool. No, I I, I don't like when we split like I kind of went my own way. Right. You yeah. know what I mean? I grew my own way because it was sort of like Cashmere Jungle Lords. Oh, yeah. With Sean Sumner. Uh, oh, what was this one? Um, Burma Jam? Oh, yeah. What was Burma Jam? Rocky's not in that, but Tim Harris is. Like, yeah, I see yeah. Bops, uh, Tim Harris, Jim Thomas, Bops, Tim Harris, Greg Ottinger. Mm -hmm. It's like Oh my God, like all these people were involved with Guar. Yeah. Um, yeah, what, if you, if you care to speak on it at all, like what was this, 
when you broke up with Dave or or the ending of the band, what do you want to say about that? Um, breaking up with Dave um, was pain, sad. It was painful because how was, long how long were you together? Like, like two years, years, I guess. Two years, yeah. Yeah, and I, that I, stage of your life, that's a long time. Yeah, it is. And we lived together, and we had moved lived in the milk bottom we lived on main street and grove avenue and franklin and, and we had some pretty bizarre experiences and i met his family his mother and his brother and his best friend tim jenkins and uh you know and um we were productive together and disciplined but i don't like yeah and then like i guess we were growing apart or he was more hedonistic than i was because Sure. You know, and he still was. I like his whole life, and um, I don't think he wanted anything to stand in his way of musical making it in the music business. I think he said that one day, and then, like you know, and I always actually for a while, like after we split, like you know, I didn't talk to him for a while. But then I went to yeah. South Africa, in New York, for. South Africa for two, a couple of years and I came back and we reconvened and it was still there, our deep love and friendship. And um, he said, wow, this is true love, you know, cause we were still completely aligned. And um, this is like in the nineties and it was, you know, like he was a very special person to me in my formative years and I always, wish that if he hadn't died that he would have made it through his hedonistic phase which was so self-destructive and and like chilled out and then like you know like it would have been healthier mm -hmm. in, in so many different ways and if he had found somebody that he was completely aligned and compatible with because by then i was it was just really unconditional like our um love and friendship had really become com really unconditional love so it was like like you know so did you um follow guar at all in that period or? yeah absolutely i did because i knew all the people in there, even if we had had falling out and maybe I was not the right female for the band. And granted, I, I, you know, I, <laughs> maybe absolutely right. And I just thought like, yeah, I did follow them. They were Richmond. It was my hometown and I knew everybody. And I, um, I remember in South Africa, like some magazine came out and there was a photo and my friends came running up to me and they were like, oh my God, didn't you say you were involved with this band? And I was like, I went, and it was like Danielle and Brocky and Hunter and, and all the people in the band then. And, and um, you know, it was strange to see down in Cape Town and, you know, cause this was in 92, but I mm -hmm. think that was Guar's golden age. Oh um, yeah. The night, early nineties. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah, I think so. Everyone was young and beautiful, and and um, and, and they was, were just hitting at the right time, at the right moment. Right, fresh. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, hit. Yeah, yeah. I think so. so. Were you a fan of the music? Like, what did you like to listen to back then or now? Um, I like the broad. I I actually play classical a lot, but I play everything when i run and work out i play 70s like um bachman turner overdrive or like mm. um argent or you know like and you know just like whole you know and then <laughs> i play everything from classical to um you know like funk i like funk and then you know just like dance and so like yeah I don't, i'm not a snob or a a, mm -hmm. a corner person for music. I'm like, yeah, if it sounds good, it sounds good. So. Heavy metal? I, <laughs> like rock. Heavy metal. I love heavy metal. Sometimes, like Metallica oh, or like, sure. yeah, you're just like, Metallica is the best band ever. Yeah. <laughs> That's I mean, you know, I mean I'm being like, they're so good. Like, you can't fake that. You know, you're like, 
you know, Sandman or whatever it's called. Enter Sandman, yeah. Yeah. You can't, there's no cutting corners to get to that end of the product. Right. Um, let me see. Are you in the um, Shimmy Disc compilation stuff? Do you remember? I think I was a little. Let me see. Shimmy. I had this kind of lined up. Oh, yeah, and I have a story. What about this? Well, yeah. Yeah, let's hear it. What is this and what's the story? Are you in this video? I think the Schaefer Court show in there. That's actually Rocket. Right. Attacked after me. I think that's. Okay. I think there's some stuff after this. Yeah, like this stuff. coming up. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, where was this? That's the banquet. <laughs> That was in the milk bottle, in the brown mm. bottle. Is that you? Right there, yeah. Yeah, that's me. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, oh, there's the Chateau of Sin, okay. Yes. And then you were on the news, right? This is part of that whole thing. Yeah, I was on the news there. I haven't seen Wait, it. I have a better version of this. Broad Street has been besieged with savage weather. Today it was besieged by savages. Already that that looks cold. It was cold. In <laughs> evil types roaming the streets, but they did have a message. This is, believe it or not, a local That's me. Band. Yeah. So, like, what? Um, That's the dinosaur tooth necklace. Oh, there it is. Okay, cool. We found it. Um, was there a lot of like, I, I don't know how spread out the shows that you did were, but what was like the in-between time, like preparing and was there a lot of time between the shows that you did and the preparation? Um, yeah, for the Schaefer and that, and um, there was probably like three months or something. Okay. And then maybe and everyone maybe, just like hanging out, like making stuff, and they were, no, well, hanging out, being in other bands. Um, I'm I'm still at VCU. Right. Rocky was still might be at VCU. Um, like, uh, yeah. So everybody had stuff going on, but I had a studio in the milk bottle with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did since eighty. Seven, six, six. But it's cold. This looks pretty fun. This is like this is the kind of stuff that I love to see, like the real weird origin story stuff. Yeah, and Ted Sanders was filming then. Ted Sanders, gotcha. Yeah. That's Schaefer Court. That's Schaefer Court? That's the show? Yeah. Oh my god, see release the show. I wanna see this show. There's obviously video of it. That's yeah. great. I gotta get Bob on the show and talk about the Guar archive. There it is. Yeah. I didn't notice, I didn't realize, you know, back when I first saw this, that this was the Schaefer Court show. Some of it. Did that's you have the, the meat, meat grinder? Yeah, that's the meat grinder. And I, I remember like near the end of my era with Guar, I had wanted to, and I'll tell you a story, I wanted to go up I wanted Guar to play in New York, and I guess they already. That's me there. Where is that? Is that Schaefer Court? Schaefer Court. Oh wow! This is all Schaefer Court footage. Incredible. Yeah, and so I wanted to um, get a show in New York, and so I got a compilation from Greta Brinkman via Dave and Don, and I took it up to New York. And this is probably in 87 in March. And I took it up and I took it to Limelight and CBGB's and I mm -hmm. met with the owner of CBGB's. What's his Hello? name? Hello, hello. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Chris, and Christy, he sat Christy, there Christy. and he yeah. goes, okay, I'll see this video. And because I've taken like the bus up with this VHS and I showed it to him and he goes, that's, that's me there. And I, he was like, mm -hmm. I'll give you I'll give you guys a show. That's your hammer. 
Yeah, that's my hammer. He said, I'll give you guys a show. And it was really odd because we were sitting there and somebody threw something in the trash can and it lit on fire. And also, Whoa. in CBGBs? Yeah, and we were all distracted by this fire in the trash can. And everyone was like, You've got some water. And I just thought it was kind of like the sign of the energy or it felt like, you know, energy. But he, he saw the compilation and then I came back with the, uh, and I had met. I'd run into at the pyramid. I ran into muscle and. Oh my God, the pyramid. Yeah, and I ran into muscle. Oh no, the, there's a pyramid in Richmond also. Oh okay. There. And I ran into Brocky and muscle, and Brocky was really mad at me, and and I guess it did, there was resistance to me going up and trying to get a show in New York, even though they were gonna do it anyway. Yeah. I think that they I, ended up playing the limelight. They did play the one one. Yeah. I don't know about CBGBs. I wanted to. So there, there was like, they just bought a school bus. And so that was, um, you know, the exit for me. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, I guess, you know, like, because, um, but it was an interesting, um, like, I don't know. Like if you, like, I wanted to get into New York right away, even though that would have happened. And that's where they ended up uh, recording their first album anyways. Yeah, with... Um, Kramer. Shimmy Disc. Shimmy Disc, yeah. yeah. Kramer, yeah. I met them. I mean, yeah. All right, let's talk about your art. <laughs> I don't know in what kind of chronological order these are, but maybe you can tell us a little bit about your art your non guar related art. Yeah, that's um, the city of Richmond on the left. It's like eight by six, and that's a brontosaurus on the right. Both of them are oil, and the brontosaurus is, uh, you know, it's just, they're both kind of a slightly abstract, but they're big paintings. Brocky carried the, bron the brontosaurus to art school. So these are from the 80s? No, the, no. the, uh, Richmond one on the left is a little bit um, later, but the dinosaur is old and I sold it in New York and I sold the Raven one, the, the Richmond yeah, one. I don't know. It's in here somewhere, I'm sure. I was sold. That is, I painted that during my uh, love affair with Brocky and it's just called love really. And that's how it was. It was kind of like mystical, but. That's all. Most so of this, this painting represents your relationship. A little of. bit, like the 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 split with the river and the bowing and the kind of like dance going on and the magical ism. Mm -hmm. Yeah, interesting. Mm -hmm. And that also that was hanging. Mike Bonner bought that, but really nice. Yeah, but I that was hanging. Mike Bonner, come on the show, buddy. I want to talk to Mike Bonner. Yeah, he probably has a zillion stories. Oh, but, my God, I'm sure. You know, that was in the house I lived in with um, Dave and um, John. Mm -hmm. And I gave that to Gorbachev's mother um, through the Russian embassy in New York. This is after, I think I was not in Guar anymore, and um, Brocky loved that painting, but it says flowers for Gorbachev's mom. And I kind of realized, I guess kind of was like, God, everyone has a mother that's kind of like a, a kind of a cohesive piece um, focus, you know, if you, so I took it to the Russian embassy and they sent it to Gorbachev's mother. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right. And, so now we'll talk about the Global Wings project, because this is probably what you're most famous for, right? Yeah. Um, what is the Global Angel Wings project and when did it start? And it did started, you know that it was going to continue like as far as it has? Um, I, I wasn't sure, but like I started it uh, authentically in 2012 in the streets of L.A. street art. And I basically started putting up angel wings and I know they've become kind of basic and a lot of people are putting up wings and stuff, but it was hashtags, but I put them up to remind humanity of our divine selves that we are the angels of this earth, that it's up to us, really, 
And then it became, um, you know, like got popular via social media coincidentally. And people started to kind of, uh, you know, post about it. And it, it's probably slowed down a little, but the core and base um, premise of the um, project is about humanity and reminding us of our higher nature. So it's kind of, um, you know, it's simple, striking, and strong, you know, SSS. Like, Was it meant to be sort of an ongoing, like, indefinite project, or did yeah, that kind it, of surprise you? Um, no. When I first put them up, I was, I had had this kind of idea or vision in, like, 2011 to 12, and I was thinking, as I drove down the depressing highways of Los Angeles, and I saw all these industrial buildings, I kept envisioning wings on the building, and I like wings kept coming to my head and I was just like, God, I could just put them up. I could just put them up. It'd be so good for humanity just to be reminded of these, the divinity in humanity, our higher selves, not our base selves, because we were so based out, you know, everything was all base, decadence, corrupt, you know. And so I acted on it one night with um, in downtown LA, that's Kenya. And yeah, then there's, there's some international, we got Mexico, Kenya. Yeah, and then I put them up and people responded to it. And then I did more. And then, then I started getting commissions. And I still did some, I still do some for orphanages. And that's mm. Harlem. And I was going to say, so this is interesting because I, I used to work on 110th street right across the street from central park mm -hmm. and this is like a couple blocks away from where i worked for about 10 years that's wild. so without knowing it i pat i've probably passed this yeah. quite a few times and not realizing that yeah that's one of like a member of guar did this <laughs> like holy shit I, I was trying to make time to go back and maybe take a picture with this or the one in Brooklyn or any of the ones in New York, but I didn't get a chance to, but it's, I think it's still there and maybe one day I'm going to, I'll get a chance to it's do still that. There. It gets weathered though, but. Yeah. Well, that's kind of cool though. Cause this is kind yeah. of under, this is like in an underpass, I think. So. Yeah, in 11th and Park underneath. Yeah. So you, it was like two blocks away from where I worked That's funny. for like 10 years. Yeah. yeah um that's paris paris right yeah that's mexico mexico mm -hmm. japan, japan wow you've been everywhere with this thing that's japan too suko i love this picture it's a great picture yeah god look that's australia perth is this when you saw um steve uh yeah, I went to Melbourne that time. Nice. Did you get to see his band or anything like that? I did. We went oh, to Oh yeah, the Resignators, is that what Yeah. Called? Yeah, the um what yeah. Do you like ska music? Were you skanking? I do. And they're just we're good people and Australia isn't as tense as the United States. Things are easier. They call it the lucky country. Mm -hmm. It's like the U.S. has so much pressure and social stress on it, and we're all forced to try to be good and nice and, oh, don't do anything wrong and, and stay in line, or you stepped out of line, I'm going to cancel you. Right. Oh, and Australia, like, kind of feels like, whoosh, you know? So. Mm, I'd like to go someday, yeah. It's cool. I um, We were talking about a band that his band played with Cat, Cat bite, and I ended up going to see them a couple weeks ago in Brooklyn. It was great. They're a ska band. Nice. That's in California, in a mission of like a five star hotel or something. Downtown LA. Yeah. So there's just like, how many wings have you? Do you think you've you've made at this point? Um, on the streets, I don't know, a few hundred, a couple hundred, and privately more, and then prints and product and things right is this brooklyn that's brooklyn okay see that's the one that's probably most accessible to me that i probably would drive by most yeah. often yeah. i gotta go find those wings it's on a restaurant World right? Trade Center. 
that one. This so this that's, is the Spotify. Yes, yeah, Spotify World Trade Center. Yeah, I wonder if that's accessible to the public or not. No, people no. have been trying to get up there, and mm. no. mm -mm. that stinks. Oh, he's a famous um, musician in. Italy, Mar Maria Biondi. He's almost like the Frank Sinatra of Italy. Okay. I met him. He's so nice. I Is this like an album cover? Yeah. It's his yeah. album cover. And I was supposed to send him a painting and it got returned and I resent it. And he wanted one of my sweatshirts. I I, I lost the ball with him, but I, I still have his address. So. Mm -hmm. Halle Berry. Oh, wow. Really? Where is this? Do you know? No, that was down uh, LA, but it's... um been painted out oh that's that's a good way to remember it with Halle Berry I didn't realize that was her yeah that's great that's, that's a great, great picture yeah a surf surfboard do you surf I do a little yeah mm -hmm. yeah long board mostly but I'd surf for a while I was kind of disciplined about it for about 10 years in LA and then it's hard to wetsuits and you get out there and then you know so like i it like i phased out but it's mm. it's like it's like yoga it's something like um you never regret doing you're like oh. i've never done it i <laughs> i'm the ocean is a, a frightening place to me so here's a, a yeah that's made by um phil murphy um okay He's a friend of mine. He's making these leather jackets. So are these available now? <coughs> yeah. They have to just DM me. That's Moscow. Moscow, wow. Yeah, that's Moscow. That's and Brooklyn, right? Brooklyn again, yeah. Yeah. See, I gotta find that. It's just like I got I'm gonna have to go move their trash cans out of the way and they're gonna be like, What the fuck are you I doing? Know, I know, but that that was the only place I could put them. Yeah, because yeah. I was actually doing a small documentary for voice of america uh -huh. and i had to put up in action they needed the footage that's the grammy museum but those are down now but uh, do they exist somewhere um no that was in front of the grammy museum but um the, i mean like up. um was this this looks like it was a print or something no 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 they were up there in the front okay. of the grammy museum they were up for like that's tokyo oh wow <laughs> uh that's carlos santana oh cool mm -hmm. and so this is made out of tires right yes. what's the story behind that that, that um, seems like a task i was commissioned with art from the ashes and they gave me a fund to do that and i said well let's make wings out of tires and i did with the help of stevie Bryant, Stevie Casual, who, um, the late Stephen Bryant, my great friend. And oh, I, yeah. So I always said, like, you got to see the Guar TED Talk, you know, because Mike Bishop did a TED Talk about Guar. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, my God, he's not the only Guar member who has done a TED Talk. You've done a TED Talk. Yeah. And I don't know which one came first because I think they were both in the same year. That's Not that it matters, but I just thought it was interesting that like two members of Guar ended up doing TED Talks on the same at the same time period. Yeah, that is weird. I think I saw I I think I remember seeing that one. Yeah. Yeah, I it's I would recommend it to anybody. Um I mean it's actually about Guar and their relationship to Richmond. Yeah. Um, and of course Mike Bishop's like a professor so he's he's very intelligent when he speaks about it yeah uh, i think the biggest problem that he had with it is that they cut it from 20 minutes to 10 minutes like right before he walked out on stage so he's like what how do you do you know how how can you do that to me oh really I didn't know. yeah so like he was kind of flustered like trying to get through it and trying to get through all the information in half of the time that he had prepared to do it in but i still recommend it it's like before the documentary came out that was like my what i would send people to people to like like oh this is what guar is but in, in a sort of intellectual context but this was after dave passed okay yeah this was all after this was like when he was back in the band as the singer oh okay so i think it was the same year as this about seven years ago 2015 
Yeah. That so one. that sounds about right. Okay. Um, and then, oh, this. That's wild. This is a necklace. I love this. This is great. Yeah, that's like, I'm working with them. Those are precious gems, diamonds, and like sapphire and ruby and gold and a hanging feather. And it's a mold. And that could be a ring and or a brooch or a necklace. Yeah, I work with them. Mm -hmm. And then like, I guess, I don't know, here's some random photos oh. and random art. That guy from Belgium took that. He made a book from, um, he came out and photographed the, that's on the hill behind my house. Oh, there's Richmond again. So that's a duplicate in here. Yeah, and that's um, Rat. Yes, <laughs> is that, uh, how old is that one? I sold that one in New York. That's like, um, pretty old. I like it. That's crows or ravens or. Were these part of a series at all or just kind of. No, it's just. What you were doing at the time. King and queen. And then this is more what you're doing these days, right? Yeah, that one, it doesn't. I, I worked on those since then. Those don't even. That's right. kind of weird. That's I know you sent me a video. Let me play this video. Yeah. Saturn. Welcome to the. Oops, did I. Yeah. Yeah. So you're doing the planets. What made you want to do the planets? I don't know. You don't know. Um, astronauts and angels, Earth. Um, I just wanted to add Mercury. Are they done? Or are they on display no, anywhere? Well, some of them were done. Like um, that one, "Love Your Neighbor." Mars is done, and I'm with Jupiter. I think that one was done. That's in California. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's what these are. What are you working on now? Well, I was doing a little bit of some, um, I was doing these commissions I have, and I was doing, I, I go to Japan in February and uh, an island past Okinawa, and I have some, like maybe Hungary and Germany, but like, um, are you still coming to New York at all? Because I know that yeah, was a plan at one point. To do in the Bronx, and then. Um, yeah, let me know if you come up here. Yeah, and I was working on some product, and they're making some product out of the Planet series, and. Oh, I, cool. Yeah, because um, I do do some things, and then I. I don't even know what I'm like really doing. Like. Um, There's I, no like really uh, ongoing series projects right now um i was starting to do some more music i mean i had oh, done yeah i had done some um i'm gonna pull up your website here right and i had done some like film and like editing oh really in africa but it's mostly this global angel wings project in my own painting and being mm. family i've had like some family things I need to be near and, um, you know. Go and, to colatmiller.com if you want to see this stuff and, uh, you know, connect with her on all the things. Get some merchandise. Buy some stuff. Oh, this is what I, I loved these, these um, pool floaties. That's that's so, such a good idea. Yeah, that's my Whose in, idea was this? Intex. That's Actually, great. Intex called me up and they were like, let's do this. And then they were in Walmart and in Amazon. Oh, and, wow. Uh, uh, if I had a pool, <laughs> I would buy one. I think that's cool. Well, you put it on the beach. Oh, shoot. I'm, I'm looking at them and it, and it popped up in a different window. Whoops. Oh, that's I think there's a at. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, there you go. They're not even that expensive. Twenty-eight dollars. That's from Walmart. That's Let's see if it's still there. In today's world. They yeah, probably not that's inflation. It's like, that's like a quarter of a gas tank. Thirty-one dollars. Right. What car do you have though? Uh, a Nissan from I don't know, oh. ten something years ago, probably. Right. Okay. Well, cause um, like yeah, gas. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, what are these um? Scarves and pet oh. stuff, and 
and this oh, Colette Miller collection.com is a different yeah, website. I don't know. I'm like, I don't know. I'm going to phase with them. I don't know. Whatever. I yeah. mean, not like born greedy. I was just sort of like, Hey, you got to sell your art, man. You know, like, of course the artists got to eat too. Yeah. I do eat too Good. much, but like, I was too just, much. Oh. you know, I, I like, I don't know. Enjoy I just, yourself. I just, I like to, the I'm happiest when I travel and like I work like in orphanages or refugee camps. Like when I did wings at an orphanage in Juarez or in China or in a, France and a refugee, you know, it's like that makes yeah. you feel like you're alive, you know. It's you know, and to me, that's what makes me feel like because I, I feel like, what's the point of being alive? And and if you just go out there and you kind of give or help or you know, like you know, I I don't know. Sure. That's where I, I feel happiest. And are you doing any music at the moment? I actually was jamming with um, this, somebody. You posted in here a month ago, so that's that's something new I didn't catch. Well, Danny, was Black. Danny Black. He was in Guar, wasn't he? Yeah, and um, on the other stuff. And I also posted um, something from some friend of mine from New York. He's a great guitarist, but I haven't talked to him. What What's your music like? It's not like Guar, right? <laughs> Don't expect Guar. Um, no, it's not. It, I mean, it's not like polished hardcore or whatever. No, no but it's it's more like spiritual hardcore at some time, and and then sometimes it's more um, abstract fluff. I mean, you know, I try to stay authentic, and a lot of it it wasn't isn't produced you know because i know production sure. matters a lot you know and you yeah, can... it depends on who you talk to have you heard these soundcloud rappers <laughs> they don't seem to care about production and they're getting they're doing pretty good you never okay. know well do you like rap um i don't i mean it's not my genre that I, my go-to genre it's not my go -to. but i guess it depends on what era you're talking about too like i i am much less connected to what's happening now than say like the 90s or the 80s because see i'm not a rap fan but you know I'm, a, I'm more of a structured melodic fan and i can go from light to hard mm -hmm. and you know like i said earlier like classical to funk but right yeah, i don't bootsy collins who Bootsy, Bootsy Collins, P Funk, mm -hmm. James Brown. Like, um, um, Lady Marmalade. Okay, gotcha. <laughs> you know, and, like. By the way, if you're in the chat, if you have any questions, now's the time. Get them in. Um, Do we have anybody in the chat? I there see. are some people lurking around, but not many people talking. Where, where is there a chat? I don't even see it. Yeah, I mean, they're in the YouTube chat or Facebook or wherever they're watching it. If you have any questions for Colette, get them in. Um, is there any, how do you? What? A, did you expect Guar to still exist 30 something years later? And yes. how do you feel about the legacy of the band now? 100%. I, I knew from the beginning, meaning everybody in the milk bottle, and performing with them in my brief time. Yes, I knew Guar had what it took. I knew that there was talent. Chuck, Hunter, uh, Brocky, um, the spirit was there. It was the zeitgeist of the time for that 80s. Mm -hmm. Rich, I think, yes, I 100% knew that, especially after Schaefer Court. No, I knew that that's why when I was not in the band and kicked out or whatever and Brocky and I had trouble. I was... Is that why kind of it separated because you guys broke up? and it kind Oh, of just, well... That's, was there more to it? There was probably more to it with everybody else. Maybe I, I was just not the uh, 
ideal person that they wanted to go forward with. I mean, like Guar's about pushing boundaries. Sure. In my, you know, and they push them. And I think, like, um, if like Danielle was the, uh, she's such a hard worker. I know her from LA. We worked together a few times. We were friends a little bit and she Happy birthday you know, danielle by the way <laughs> she works so hard and she uh like she would definitely carry her weight and she i know that her art form is about pushing you know certain limitations and boundaries and and things and so i work hard myself also but maybe it wasn't like like the guar like I do angel wings, I do flowers, I you see my art. So I yeah, mean yeah. obviously I'm a different animal and it's not right or wrong. And sure. so like, you know, yeah. So maybe it was inevitable that I was not going to continue with bar. So no Is problem. there any misconceptions? about you and Guar that you would like to clear up or do you think we've kind of talked it through um i yeah i mean i just don't want people to think that i think um i was i i, I was any more than i was and like yeah. I, and i want to make it clear that i invited you to this show you know people reach out to you to talk to you about Guar, yeah. not yeah. not so much the opposite right yeah, and I don't want anything that is not mine. And I, I think that I knew Guar was a DIY do-it-yourself original. DIY. <laughs> oh, really? DIY. DUI was a do-yourself do in. <laughs> they were <laughs> in the influence of some, and then like so, <laughs> like congrats, you know, like right. Yeah, I'm like like. You know, so yeah, no, I have no, um, like, yeah, no, I knew that they were gonna do what they were gonna do, no matter what. Yeah, I knew, I knew. I did. We have a question. What's an art medium you wish to get, wish to explore more? Well, I was working in documentaries, like in Africa and stuff, and I was editing and filming, and I was thinking about that more. Um, because I had traveled with Etho News and traveled the world learning that craft, but um, I would love to get some type of proper production of my music and lyrics down with a proper lineup for sure. That was, you know, working with me. Cool. Is there any last you know, like stories or memories of Guar that you will care to share or or just you and, and the time period or or with Dave? Um, Anything that I didn't know to ask you about? Um, well, that like you know, just that Dave is sort of like one of those personalities that I think was um nobody he was nobody's, he was of the world, you know? And I think he knew that even, and I was, you know, like to have my um, moment with him was really special because he was a really special soul and he really belonged to the world and he had made his mark, you know? So I, yeah, so everybody that loves Dave, and because so many people did, and a, a couple people don't, and I get that, you know, some brilliant people don't, but um, uh, yeah, so. I mean, he was a strong personality. I don't think he, it's it's natural that he wasn't for everybody, I think. I mean, I, I met him in very, very, very small doses, like for a couple minutes at a time. So I, I don't have that kind of relationship with him, but I did, was lucky enough to meet him a few times. Yeah, well, if he like is like the type of person that the energy in the room goes up and everybody leaves in a better mood, you know, so he's that type of person. 
Oh, this is You should have gotten into politics. Yeah. Do you think, uh, well, okay, here's an interesting question. How do you think Dave would feel about the co political climate that has happened since his death? Um, uh, don't we wish he would have <laughs> uh, relieved the tension? Right. Because, you know, he was like, right. He was on Fox News as Odorous, you know, yeah. before he died. I mean, obviously, he, he eventually got kicked off of that show. But for a while, for a couple of years, he was a interplanetary correspondent for Fox News, you know? Yeah, right on. He, he could go there and say fucked up things, <laughs> you know, in character. Totally. I feel like he's a great disrupt disruptor in that way. And it's, yeah, I, I don't even know what he would do with this the, the, thing, the problem with the punk genre is your platform isn't big enough. And so some people end up working with the mainstream media and sure. allegedly selling out, but they get well, a bigger platform. And so Brocky, if he had like, or Hunter or whoever else, or Chuck or all these other like brilliant people. I think Don is the most political one at the moment. Don. <laughs> yeah. He's, he, cool. he's very political on YouTube these days. Yeah. And Don is funny as I've always thought Don was funny ever since the early Gore days. I was like, God, he should be an actor. And uh, well, now he's acting on YouTube for <laughs> hours, hours and hours and hours a week. I can't yeah. keep up with it. Yeah, he's great. And um, so like, yeah, because money. He's more on the Trump side. I don't know where Dave would be. I, I imagine not there. I'm but not on either side. Right. I mean, they're, not, yeah. they're all they all suck in the in the long run. But. Right. How um, can you be on either side? I mean, yeah, it's, it's like, pretty terrible. Either side looks like a nuclear disaster. And that's what's great about the Guar Show is they don't care. They will kill on stage. You know, any prominent <laughs> political figure like they've. People get mad about who I they, you know. Away, they will just kill. They've been killing every sitting president since Reagan, I believe. <laughs> right? <laughs> right. No, they never killed Reagan. Well, they resurrected him and killed him oh, in, in later shows. Yep. yep. Okay. Wait, what, who was president when Guar started? I think Clinton. No, 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 no. no. They, they, in the, in the 84, 85, 86. Reagan. That was Reagan. Yeah, it was yeah. Reagan. So they definitely came in during the Reagan era. Mm -hmm. Interesting, yeah. Yeah, they had a character called the Reaganator in the 2000s sometime where he was like Reagan resurrected as like a corpse in a giant robot thing. It's, you know, very guar. Um, lots of blood. Yeah. What songs were on the set list for, at Schaefer Court? Do you remember? I, I remember a couple. There was the Cures the Arctic Snow. Um, Americanized. What you um, saying, yeah. Yeah. Um all the ones that are on like the um, probably all the stuff on here. That one. It's a you ain't shit guar theme. Yeah, let there be guar, which was my personal favorite. Let there be guar. Cool. Yeah. That's Is that song. a song? Yeah. We got guitars. Oh, the guar theme. Guar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that song. Guar, guar. Yeah. Uh Slutman I City. Yeah. Time for death. Yes. Was there a techno song back then? Yeah, that was the Shaper Court show. Um, Gore Gore had a song. Eat yeah. Steel was like a different Eat Steel than the one on the This Toilet Earth album. Yeah. Um, was there any songs that you remember them doing that didn't end up on an album, or like were kind of obscure or never played live? Maybe. No, and truthfully, when I broke up with the Dave and the Gore thing, it was pretty bloody and it was pretty uncomfortable and it was pretty survival mode. So I wasn't like taking notes. I sure, was just sure. sort of like, okay, this is it. Like, you know, like I wasn't going to be on the bus. And yeah. then, you know, so, you know, it, like, yeah, I really knew – I. I um, like they were the people I knew at the time in Richmond and I did respect everybody that w was in the band, like um, Hunter. Mm -hmm. I always liked Hunter and Chuck and um, Don, who was so funny. And so 
and Bonner, who was so nice, really. He had a gentle soul. And yes. Bonner, come on the show. I've interviewed Chuck Bonner. Hunter and Don, so. Yeah, full on. So, they, yeah, they were like, they had what it took. And it proved the, the proof is there. Yeah. It's a really a legendary band, and congrats to anybody. And Danielle, too, you know, so. She had um, did I don't know if you want to talk about this? You performed with the Girly Freak Show in the past. Yeah, a little bit when Danielle and I, which was which was her like circus sideshow project, kind of outside of Guar. Yeah, Danielle stamped. Yeah, she had a she did the Tesla coil. We were friends. Yeah, she's in the Guinness Book of World Records, I believe. Oh, cool. Yeah, like we were. That. We were friends a little bit in California, and um, she had the Girly Freak Show, and I, she asked if I wanted to paint on the side while they did like eat light bulbs and did the spy spy Dora, <laughs> mm -hmm. and like did like all this like tricks and stuff, and I'm like, okay, like I'll paint in the corner, and then uh, and she had. What like, were you wearing? Did you have like a costume for that? Mm, I think I was wearing like some, like, like I don't know, cutesy painting type of outfit. But I don't think I was um, right for the job. Mm -hmm. and, um, but I, I do know that she works her. I mean, she carries her weight. She is. Oh yeah, she's very pro prolific. I know her. Yeah. Um, prop companies made stuff for Stranger Things and Lady Gaga, and like you see her stuff everywhere, and you don't even realize it. Really? Yeah. She yeah. works hard, and I can see why she lasted in Guar because uh, she pulls her weight. Yeah, Danielle, come on the show anytime. Yeah, I'd love to talk to you. Show. It's her birthday today, apparently. So oh, happy, it is. Birthday. happy birthday. Um. This is a safe space for all Guar people. I want to hear from all the perspectives. I yeah. think we did it. Yeah, cool. I think, That's yeah. Good. Thank is you. Is there any any last words, any last questions in the chat? No, no just congratulations to uh, the Guar family. And you should get Liz to Fairbanks. Right. Yeah, yeah. Boom, and Melanie and Danny Black with the, um, he was a roadie. Well, maybe, I don't know. Like, it's up to you. I'm yeah, sure. I mean, I'll talk to anybody. Um, I know you've been floating me names, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm overbooked right I'm now. Totally but, yes, good. I will get to I'll reach out Tim to some Jenkins, of those people. Who is Brocky's best friend. You know? Who? Tim Jenkins. Yes, yes, friend. right. Yeah. Yeah, Tim, if you're watching, get you know, we're connected now. So, like, let's talk for yeah. sure. I booked uh, – oh, yeah, that's what I need to do. I need to promote the, the shows coming up on this – on this program here. Where do I have that in my slides? And who do you have coming up? I'm very Yeah. Curious. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Do to do, where did I put my I have like four slideshows open here. Live editing. Oh no, did I not put them in a slideshow? Okay, let's see if I can do this uh bootleg style. Okay. Next episode is, let's see if I can do this. I'm going to try to share my screen. I can't believe I didn't put these in the slideshow. I blame myself for that. Next episode, December 14th, Wednesdays, Matt Miner, he wrote, one of the Guar comic book series, yeah. Orgasmageddon. And he's someone, I didn't even know this, but uh, we crossed paths in the New York goth scene. So we have some some similar circles that we have here in New York. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be fun. If you That's your homework, everybody. Read Orgasmageddon, the graphic novel wow. uh, that came out a couple of years back. Um, yeah, major respect to the comic world before. yeah yeah did you see the new comic book i'd recommend yes, that one too uh, most of it and yeah actually amazing and then uh this was rescheduled 
several times as well. Uh, whoops, let me share the screen here. Techno Destructo Space Dominatrix Paramorg. This one's going to be on a Tuesday because uh, I got a job on Wednesday. I'll be filming something with Dick Manitoba from The Dictators. I believe that's his band. I hope I don't. Punk rockers are going to kill me if I'm wrong there. Um, not a Guar woman, but on the sideline characters of uh, Techno's yeah. world. And you can see that same kind of uh, outfit that you were wearing way back Absolutely. in the 80s. He's still making that stuff and putting them on uh, attractive women and the yeah. chains and everything. He's very consistent, if nothing else. Yeah, and I like the classic um, unadorned simple style. I like it. Yeah, yeah. It's very, it's just Hunter it is very consistent with his vision. <laughs> yeah. And I like that. I love that about him. And that's uh those are the official shows that I got booked. And then and then it's gonna be 2023. And we'll see. You know, I got some people that uh there's there's no there's no lack of guar people to talk to, let's say. Let's say that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, there's so many, you know, just lots of people to talk about guar with. So stay tuned with the guar pod. And uh yeah, thanks so much for being here. Thank you. And uh, I think that's it. I think we did it. Yeah. I'm going to play the theme one more time, and then um, and then I'm going to get out of here. Goodbye okay. from New York. Yep. Cool. And uh, we'll talk uh, soon. Yep. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Guarpod comes from on Guarpod. Guarpod. Wow.